this. Over 1900 years ago, this was written. Romans 13, 11 and 12. Knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we first believed. The night's far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness. Get rid of those idols. And let us put on the armor of light. If 1900 years ago, or the days far spent, the days at hand, the new day, how much more now? Now, you know what makes me cry? These disciples of Christ who were so far removed from His coming were expecting Him any moment. They lived diligently and they spent their lifetime. Jesus wasn't first. He was everything. I mean, they gave everything. Yes, we who are so close to His coming live so carelessly. After 1900 years since this is written, think of it. If it's time to wait then, what time is it now? What time is it now? I don't know what God's going to have to do. I don't know what God has to do to this city. I don't know what he has to do to every city. I don't know what he has to do to the church. But he said it's a fearful thing to fall in the hands of a living God. And he's talking to the church. He said it's a frightful thing. We're not taking it frightful. We've created a God in our, our concept. We have a concept of God that he is so... He's just so loving. He's so merciful. Yes, He is to those who follow Him in righteousness. And God so loved the world, He gave His only Son. Yes, He loves the whole world. But there comes a time when God says, My justice must now be satisfied. And He said, That's it. And He begins to move. And folks, we're not hearing it. We're not hearing it. I'm saying it, but you're not hearing it. And only the Holy Ghost can make it real. It's all over. The party's over. And now... Let me ask you how you're spending your time. You say, Lord, Lord, He's my Lord. What do you do with your spare time now? But you say, Brother Dave, I'm a housewife. And all God expects of me as a Christian housewife is to have a home where there's comfort and where there's peace. Do you mean I'm expected to carry in the burden of the Lord? I'm expected to weep between the porch and the altar too? Yes. Yes. You say, I've done my part. No. I'm saying that we haven't done our part. I'm saying that we've not taken His yoke. We have not wanted His halter. Some of you put in an eight-hour day on your job. And when you walk out of that job, you say, I've done my part. I'm hoping as nobody works your bills after the job, it's all over. And I'm going to tell you something right now. He's going to move in His fury and His wrath. Because He said, you're living a lie. You say he's Lord, he's Lord. You won't take his burden, you won't take his yoke upon you. I'm asking you, how many of you wives, how many of you husbands drive through the city or you ride the subway? How many of you wept? When's the last time you wept over the loss? Have you grown so accustomed to it it doesn't move you anymore? I've been in this city now for 30 years and it's moving me now more than it's ever moved me before because I'm getting the burden of the Lord. I'm realizing that it's not enough just to go out and pass out literature. It's not just enough to have a job for Jesus. I've got to have His Spirit upon me, His brokenness. I've got to be able to pray, Oh Lord, do something in my heart. I'm just not an errand boy. I want your heart. I want you to break me. I don't want to tell the world that He's my Lord and live a lie. Because I'm not praying, I'm not weeping. I'm, are you reading it? Are you digging into it? That's what God said to us to go deeper in this word. You have time. You say you don't have time. Yes, you have time for everything else. And he said, I'm going to judge you for it. You get my yoke upon you. You take my burden upon you. You get this halter upon you. You walk with me.